Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this advanced OneNote tutorial, we're going to be talking about inserting a handout into OneNote. How do you scale it? How do you make sure the document looks nice, is readable, and uh, is consistent too, because you definitely don't want to be resizing and adjusting a whole bunch of variables over and over again every time you insert a document. So this is the best way I found to insert a document, a handout, a piece of paper into OneNote. If you're new to this channel, this channel is for note takers. Uh, this channel is for people who use a touch screen or if you're using a uh, tablet for artwork, creative processes, anything like that, then uh, this is a great channel for you. We have a lot of content that's going to help make your note taking and drawing and design work a lot easier on a tablet. So if you haven't subscribed yet and that's you, please hit the subscribe and notification icons right now. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So I have uh, this paper from my Chinese class and I'm gonna put it on the table. And I went through a lot of different things because when it, it inserts it, I actually wanted to insert it at twice the size that it inserts it and it just, it doesn't. And so I used to insert and resize and insert and resize. By the way, you're in the insert option here at the top to do this. Go to pictures from camera. We're going to choose document from this here, not photo. So we're gonna choose document. And we're going to adjust our options here because the aspect ratio matters. We want a taller aspect ratio, which is gonna be our four by three, not our 16 by nine, which is very wide and narrow. And we're going to tap here. We're gonna pick up the tablet, get it to focus. Uh, don't worry about whether it's skewed a little bit. If it's in focus like this, uh, that's fine. And you can tap anywhere on the screen. It's going to capture it. And then let's get this bottom section here. Make sure that it's in focus. Uh, you can also adjust options here. There's a grayed out more, which I don't know why it's grayed out, but you can change these to auto and adjust focus and exposure and brightness this way, but uh, I, I don't recommend it. All right, so we have both of those done here. So let's go ahead and adjust those. And by the way, I get this error all the time, just ignore it. Uh, click here, ignore or report it to Microsoft. <laughs> One of the two. All right, so we're gonna choose, I want to actually include this text here at the top. So this is a perspective warp that it's doing and it does a really good job I want to continue this up here. So notice I'm not making a rectangle. I'm continuing with the perspective line. And if you don't understand this, don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. It's just gonna make your, your images a little more or less rectangle when you finish. Okay, so we're gonna click okay. Let's look at the second one. I don't want this top part. So I'm going to drag this down. Again, keeping it a little more narrow at the top, a little wider at the bottom, and primarily that's what you need to know. Click OK. All right, let's see. Both of these look good. Insert all. All right, great. So these look nice. Uh, they're nice and clean. Uh, for the most part, not too blurry. Uh, now up here, the reason this is a little blurrier than down here is because the angle that I shot this image at. So if I were to do a little bit more vertical over the, uh, the paper, you're going to get a better quality um, image here at the very top. For my purposes, this is going to be good enough. All right, let's say this section right here, we really want this nice and clean. And we've taken a bunch of different shots. It's just not coming out. Uh, there's a couple things that we can do to actually make this better. Let's go back from camera and let's do just this text right here. Okay, really nice and crisp, right? Let's go in here and we're going to adjust the crop. We want only this text right here. And this is pretty straight up and down, so we don't need to do anything too fancy. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and insert that. That's gigantic, but it looks really clean. Let's go ahead and scale it down and we're going to place that right on top. All right, so we put it on top. It doesn't really line up exactly the way we want. 
and we've got this little annoying thing right here. What we can do is we can uh, use digital whiteout. Let's go to draw. And we're gonna use tilt. And see here that we are able to kind of blend in right here and make that look a bit nicer. Now here's another quick little hack for getting that uh, better image quality or a little piece, uh, let's say we want to replace just this little piece here. Another way to do this is go here. Uh, let's go ahead and move this so we have that text where we want it. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, quality is nice. I'm gonna use the Windows sniping tool right here this is Win Shift S, and let's just grab just this tiny little bit. Okay, let's copy it to the clipboard. We can cancel out because we're not using this process right here to do this. Cancel, and we're just going to paste. Where did that paste? Aha, here it is. Okay. <laughs> One of the most annoying things that I find about trying to move things in OneNote is it is extremely difficult and frustrating if you don't know how to do it. So here, I'm trying to move this, and you can see it's pretty difficult. Now I can scale this really big and then move it, but it jumps. There's a snapping process, and the snapping doesn't snap to the rule lines, which would make sense to me. Uh, so there's a little process that you can use to get this to snap, uh, not snap, but move where you want. And what you're actually gonna do is you're going to uh, scale and stretch it into the position that you want, like an inchworm. Kinda cool, right? Uh, I just learned this a couple minutes ago because <laughs> I was really frustrated trying to move it. It works really well and you can put it exactly where you want. I almost forgot this one. Uh, I think this is important to know how to do. So we're gonna use the sniping tool to move this, scale it and um, change the location of it. So let's say I wanna grab this little one. Um, because this is a picture, obviously I can't just select it with the selection tool. So we're gonna use the sniping tool and we're going to select. Good, so we've selected it here. And let's go ahead and tap on the screen so the screen knows, um, so OneNote knows, uh, hey, let's put this over here and not somewhere randomly. So we're gonna paste, and let's select it, and we're gonna bring it back over here. And again, if we wanna get this into the right spot, we're going to uh, scale and stretch it into the position that we want, inchworm it around. All right, uh, that's close enough. Let's say that's where we want this. We want this larger, but we want this to go away. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing, and we're just going to grab a blank area right here. So if you're having problems getting this and it's moving, it's inside of the same box. This is the problem right here. You can see that this, there's this borderline here. It's inside the same box, and so it's not letting you overlap these images. In order to fix this, um, we're going to just step back a couple of stages. Oh, it's too far. All right, well, let's just uh, delete this. And we're going to paste this outside of the box right here. Paste. And now we can drag it directly on top. So let's zoom in. And we're going to scale this down. And then we're going to do that same inchworm process to get this to go on top of what we want it to go on top of. There we go. Ta-da! For those of you who haven't used the Artist Pad before, um, I'll put a link in the description to the install guide. Um, this used to be a bit more complicated. It's a little easier now, and we're trying to make it e easier still, but go to the install guide link in the description, and uh, this will have uh, how to install it, and the download link, the actual link there, is uh, also available. So you guys can uh, download and install the program and learn how to do that and learn how to load this up and this is a huge help. I almost forgot to mention I'm using a different stylus than the Surface Stylus. This is the Raphael 520. I was um, sent this yesterday 
um, a silver one and a burgundy one, and they have black ones coming in uh, shortly. This is better than the uh, Raphael 5 that I've been talking about in some of the other videos. It's $50 on Amazon. Uh, I have an affiliate link in the description. Please use that. I really appreciate when you do. And this one has um, beautiful clean lines. And it has two buttons. So this is the eraser button has been moved to the front instead of on the eraser, which I think is far more practical. And the right click is right here. So you can uh, really easily erase and select. I didn't do a great job selecting, but you guys get the picture. And it's magnetic. And it's got a really strong, mag uh, really strong magnetic connection. Uh, and also it has tilt. It's a great choice, and it's half the price of the standard pens. So, uh, link in the description. All right, you guys, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you found any of this information useful, give me a thumbs up on the video, and that'll help promote it so that other people see it too. All right, until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.